Hi everyone, welcome to the Any Monday Podcast. My name is Colin Hemphill. And I'm Kayla Hemphill. On our show, we roll the virtual dice each week and must watch a randomly selected anime title. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so this is our first ever live episode. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so we are in Austin, Texas at Anime CTX. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you are not here and you're listening to the recording later, you will miss all the great goofs uh, that I edited out. Yeah. <laughs> no! Don't you dare call it a <laughs> Well, last week we hit the random button on Crunchyroll, and the anime that we saw is called Card Fight Vanguard. <laughs> There's uh, a few exclamation points in there, <laughs> and a lot of uh, uppercase letters. All uppercase letters. I believe so. <laughs> so, a uh, little background on this show. Uh, this was a collaboration between the creators of several other franchises like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Duel Masters. And originally, of course, it was a trading card game that came out in 2010. And then there was a slew of anime series <laughs> related to this particular franchise. Uh, the first one was announced just a few months after the initial release of the card game and premiered in 2011. And then there were many, many, many seasons. Uh, one of which started two weeks ago. Yeah. It's still going on. Bringing us now to a grand total of 459 episodes. You will become more shocked as time goes on. Yeah. It's really, it's really something. Uh, there are a lot of other things related to it, like a 12-volume manga series in 2011, a s bunch of spin-off media, a talk radio show, <laughs> several video games, a live-action TV drama, and a, quote, hybrid live-action and anime film in 2014. And now us. Yes, I think we're adding to the problem. <laughs> also, we just found out that there is a tournament here this weekend. There is a card by Vanguard tournament tomorrow. Yes. So <laughs> if you're going to be playing in that, uh, please come find me. I want to know how to play this game. Yes. <laughs> so uh, as usual, we watch the first four episodes of this randomly generated show. And uh, we don't normally do this in front of a crowd, so uh, we like to badmouth shows a lot. <laughs> and uh, I realize that we could potentially be stepping on toes, but um, I don't care. <laughs> Pick better shows. Yeah, yeah, more or less. All right, Kayla, would you like to give us a synopsis? I would love to. Aichi is a shy high school student who suffers from a lack of self-confidence. His only comfort is a rare trading card that was given to him by a stranger when he was a child. When the card is stolen by a classmate, Aichi has to learn how to play Card Fight Vanguard in order to win it back. It's through this card game that Aichi starts to break out of his shell and form friendships. Okay, so, if you, <laughs> we're always generous with the synopsis. Because <laughs> I write it. Yeah. <laughs> There's an, only a mild amount of snarky, like, sarcasm <laughs> underneath them. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the story of this particular anime is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, basically, there is this kid named Aichi, like you mentioned, who gets bullied several times in this show, pretty frequently, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he is a young kid, this, ki uh, this guy named Kai uh, runs into him and is like, you should be strong like the dude on this card. <laughs> yeah. And that's how he like gets him over being scared and afraid. And kind of. Beat up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most of the show happens some indeterminate amount of time later. We probably roughly like 10 years or so. Yeah. And uh, they never like actually play the card game when they were kids, even though they set the board up and everything for no reason. It takes a long time to set up the board, apparently. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, sorry, I got to go. Just take this card. I'll see you later. Super rare card. And then he didn't see him until 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> because he abruptly moved. Yep. Uh, so we kind of come into the show at this point later in their lives where um, this kid is getting beat up again and some bullies steal the very card that he's held on to for these 10 years. Mm -hmm. And 
These bullies basically want the card because they want to go beat up like the best people at the game. Sure. Who play at this card shop in town. And that person who is like the best at this game, guess what? what? It turns out to be Kai. <gasps> Shocker. Shocker. The same guy <laughs> from 10 years ago. <laughs> he moved back. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly. Um, and unexplained. <laughs> and that's the story? Yeah. Then there are three episodes in which they explain the rules of how to play this card game. Yeah. We, we move from some plot to instructional animated video. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so, and it's great because everything, like, works out perfectly through every card game that they play. Like, they draw exactly the right cards at the right time and all this drama and tension. That's how card games are. Okay. Yeah. I'll take the word. <laughs> you just don't we'll, play them we'll, right. We'll go to the tournament tomorrow and let's see if that works out for them. You just stand over their shoulder and be like, you know, uh, that's just supposed to work out. Yeah. You're just supposed to draw the right card. If you had better imagination, this would happen. Yes. So that's another aspect of this show is that uh, the card game is all about imagination. Yes. And that's pretty much how you win at the game. Yeah, apparently. Not skill. Right. Uh, you want to talk about the characters a little? Just get into there. OK. <laughs> so we've talked some about the main character, Aichi. Um, he's pretty standard. He's shy and reserved, and that's his personality, mm -hmm. and that's it. Um, and when his card gets stolen, he goes to this card shop, which I don't know how he figured that out, but sure. He goes to this card shop and wants to challenge them for the card, because apparently you have to win the card back, even though it was definitely stolen. Um, That's how property theft works. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and he, then we discover that even though he's never played the game, he has built his own deck. Yes. Because <laughs> this is also how card games work. He has built the perfect deck. Yes, because he has imagination. Yep. And that has allowed him to become yes. an amazing player because apparently the more you play against people, the worse you get. Which is why I think we'd win tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. So I guess the only real thing about this character is that um, they present him as like this shy, timid kid. There's basically one other scene with this kid that's not in the card shop, and that's in his classroom. And the teacher like asks if he'll answer a question and he just shuts down. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, uh, asked if he wanted to participate in war, like what he would do. And he's like, I'd stand in the back and run away. And everyone's like, ugh, don't you want to be a warrior? And I'm like, no, so, I would also want to run away from war. I don't Thank understand. you. <laughs> he's the true survivor. <laughs> and then um, as soon as he like stumbles into this card shop, quite literally, uh, like after being beat up, he's like, wait. That's my car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, and that's where he starts to open up and he becomes who he was meant to be. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't much of anything. <laughs> it's just sort of now he's a little less shy. And real good at cards. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's, he still has lose. <laughs> okay. So do we want to talk about Kai? Mm. I have two words. What are they? Brooding sensei. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. that is his entire personality. Yeah, you also mentioned the word narcissist the other day. Which, oh, yes. That's also pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so Kai is the, the guy who gave him the card originally 10 years ago. And within those 10 years, he has become a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for no, no apparent reason, they haven't gone into like what happened in that whole time span, but this guy goes from like, yeah, you're awesome, and you're going you're gonna to grow up to be awesome and, and you know, win everything. And then uh, now he just goes like, I don't play that game anymore. <laughs> and 
It seems like he hates this game for the same reason that, um, if you remember our the show that we watched about Mahjong, mm-hmm. the main character hated that game too. Yeah. Is because he's too good. Right. He's too good at there's it. There's no challenge. And there's no challenge. Except there is. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that more? So as it turns out, uh, he's got like this kind of dopey friend who it took us forever to even figure out what his name was because we can't find it anywhere. <laughs> um, but this dopey friend is like, even he has beat Kai a few times before. Yeah. And when this kid shows up, after 10 years having never played the game with his perfect deck, he immediately beats Kai. Yep. First time out the gate. Because of his imagination. Right. So we see Kai win maybe like once. Yeah, against the bully dude. Yeah. And we never see him play again. And really, like, the bully kids are the only people who consistently are bad at the game. Yeah. Everyone else is the best at the game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Especially if you've never played before. Right. Yeah, so there's um, another kid that comes into the shop um, who I just call the annoying bratty kid. That works. Yeah. Uh, he's like an elementary school. Yep. And he comes into the shop being like, I need to know who the best player is because I, the great, I don't even remember what he calls himself. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> is it his name? I, I'm not sure. Okay. He yeah, calls no himself idea. the great something or another. And he then proceeds to win one game and then lose. Yep. <laughs> and that's his whole personality. That's that character. <laughs> yeah. Now, to be fair, he came in episode four. Three. Get, episode three. And then episode four focused on a different character. So we haven't seen a whole lot of him. I don't expect much more. <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, any of these other insignificant characters you want to talk about? <laughs> Uh, we could talk about the girl who uh, has a made-up power. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> have you heard of a thing before called a photographic memory? Yeah, the thing that doesn't exist. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone uses it like it is. Mm-hmm. So, there's this girl named Misaki, who is another odd character because she works at the card shop. She's a full-time employee there and also has never played the game before. (laughs) But she's also awesome at it. (laughs) Immediately. And uh, because of her photographic memory is able to just wipe the floor with everyone. (laughs) It's even worse than Aichi because she didn't build her own deck. Somebody else built the deck and handed it to her and then she proceeds to win with this deck that she's never seen. (laughs) Best part is he built her a sexy lady's deck. Oh, yeah. We didn't (laughs) didn't talk about that. (laughs) All right. Uh, Anything else about her? No, that's it. That's her whole personality. (laughs) Yeah. Really, the only other characters we saw were the two bullies Mm -hmm. who beat up that kid. And that's Morikawa and Izaki. And they're not really notable aside from they're bad at the game. Mm -hmm. And their hair is terrible. (laughs) Yes. We're going to get more into that. Yeah. There's also the cat manager. Right, yeah. I don't remember his name either. I think it was just cat manager. That works. <laughs> All right, well, normally we take a break here, <laughs> but we're going to power right through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to go into some of the production that's in the show? Sure. So uh, we usually talk about some of the production elements of the show, like animation, art style, character designs, music, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's not a whole lot to say about this one. <laughs> um, it is easily some of the worst character designs I've seen in a while. It, it is super reminiscent of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Um, they have really big heads, really big hair, and very thin bodies. <laughs> Super thin. Yep. So let's touch on the hair a little bit. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, so the main character, he has, like, kind of generic brown hair, mm-hmm. except it's in this nonsensical shape that I can only describe as three large pieces and then a bunch of spikes coming out. It's very Cloud from Final Fantasy. Yeah, but it makes less sense. Well, sure. Um, and then... 
most of the other characters is just some variation on that hairstyle mm -hmm. with a palette swap. Yep, Aichi has blue. Um, his his friend who's name doesn't exist. He's blonde. Uh, 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 Miwa. Miwa. Miwa is oh, the no. dopey friend. He does have a name. And that, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the f one female character. Two females. The, the two female characters. That we did not talk about because she's that insignificant. Basically have just like normal anime hair. Yeah. Nothing super crazy. No. Um, but then... Then there is Kamui. Mm. Yeah. Kamui being the hotshot, like, elementary school kid who shows up. Uh, when he came on screen, I had a little bit of a meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> you were so mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you described it as, like, the kid from Hunter x Hunter, but yeah. is it blue or is it red? Oh, I don't remember. It was a different color. Yeah. Same thing, though. Exact yeah. same thing. Yeah, it's just, like, straight up and down. Just to the sky, spikes. Yeah. Uh, anything else on character designs? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, Kayla, what do you think of the animation quality of this show? Oh, God. Okay. So for the majority of the show itself, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not terrible. We've definitely seen worse. Um, the problem comes to the outro video. For some reason, what usually happens with the anime is that the intro and outro videos tend to have better animation because they don't have to crank it out every week. But in the outro uh, video for this, the animation takes a huge dip in quality. It's, it's really bad. And it's not like they made a style change. You know, sometimes we'll see characters like look more chibi or something like that. No, they just got real lazy. See, I disagree. I think it is a style change. And I think the style change is uh, one of the animators kind of like elbowed the other one and was like, hey, check it out. I did the rest of the show with my right hand, but I'm going to do the outro with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's so much a style change. <laughs> Just laziness. <laughs> it's a good joke, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, clearly a lot of the animation is cheaply made, mm -hmm. probably very quickly made, uh, as evidenced by the sheer number of episodes and the frequency at which they're coming out. Yeah. Uh, considering that this is mainly a tie-in to the card game, uh, they're probably gearing this a little bit towards kids, and, you know, kids don't have great standards with, uh, <laughs> with animation quality. The bar is much lower. And then they met us. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of animation shortcuts, uh, bad detail. There's almost no scenery or environments. The entire show takes place in that card shop or, yeah. like, an alleyway. Yeah. There's, there's one other place that this show happens. What's that, Kayla? It is in your imagination. Oh. <laughs> Actually, Take me there. <laughs> so, when you are playing Card Fight Vanguard, your characters actually exist on the planet Cray, where all of this takes place. And you are, you are to put your imagination there as you're playing the game, you know, instead of being talented. And when they're playing the card game, we see like scenes cut in between this, and this planet is just like a deserted canon canyon. Mm -hmm. um, it also is not well detailed in its animation. Right. Um, and this is probably the most egregious part of the animation of the whole show. Is guys, it would be really boring to watch people play cards. Let me just be real honest. Um, so they tried to make it less boring, but they failed. They failed hard. Um, because what ends up happening is that they take you to this place so that you can see kind of the lore of it, so you can actually see the cards like battling it out. But this actually ends up playing out more like old school JRPGs with the turn style battling. 
So you get a monster on the field, and then you cause them to attack your opponent, and you see like an animation of them like swinging their sword. And then, like, damage animation, and then... Literal <laughs> numbers on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very Yu-Gi-Oh style that you see the, the numbers go down. Their power level went up. Oh, my gosh. That happens so much. I don't know how this game works, but apparently it's all about just leveling up your characters. Um, and so what ends up happening is these little scenes are just cut in between a lot of monologue of them explaining what they're doing in the cards. So they're like, I'm going to turn to attack you. And then you see a little fight animation and then it goes back to the table. So there's no actual fighting going on so much as like you're just watching someone do a little attack damage. Right, and I think we'll get into this a little bit later, but like that's the majority of the show is trying to get you interested in the card game itself, but they're not really trying real hard to make the world or the game itself seem interesting. It's mostly just like how cool all these guys are and how good they are at cards. <laughs> Except they're not. No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I know you want to talk about music. I don't. No, I know you do. <laughs> I don't. Uh, okay, so uh, one thing that we have mentioned a couple times on the show is one technique that some anime use is for either the intro or outro, usually the outro though, uh, instead of like licensing another song, they will come up with something kind of generic, and then have the voice actors for the show uh, sing parts of the song that they've come up with. Uh, Kai and Aichi aren't great singers. <laughs> As it would turn out. <laughs> so not only is it like not a great song, and the vocals are kind of not good, mm -hmm. but it completely changes the tone of the show. Yeah, because it's weird and cutesy. Right. When the rest of the show is trying to take itself very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, if they had done chibi animation at this, that would have made way more sense. It would have made sense. It wouldn't have been good. <laughs> no, but it would have made sense at least. Um, the rest of the show, like the, the actual score that's happening throughout the show, um, I think I would describe it as early 2000s trance created by a 14-year-old in Fruity Loops. Okay, I need you to explain what Fruity Loops is, because uh, I only know the cereal. Um, software that was uh, made for creating electronic music that has the capability of making good stuff, but historically, not so much. Oh, that sounds like something I probably would have used. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I have for production. Anything else? Nope. Cool. Uh, Kayla, would you like to talk about your overall thoughts and anything else that you want us to know about this lovely show? <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, I think one thing that um, really bothered me, we, we had a show that we had similar but totally different reactions to. Um, this show spends a lot of time explaining the rules. Literally, it, it is like watching an instructional video for the game. Um, and we had this with the Mahjong show that we watched. Saki. Um, yeah, Saki, thank you. Um, except in that one, that actually made me want to go play Mahjong um, because there was so much context to it and there was just so much they could not explain that it was sort of like, well, I don't want to watch this show, but I would love to play this game. <laughs> this show made me do the opposite. Right. <laughs> it makes me want to go nowhere near the card game. Oh, we're going tomorrow though, right? <laughs> God, you can go tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to do karaoke. Okay. <laughs> so... This actually makes me really sad because I was one of these kids in high school. I actually spent a lot of my junior and senior year in high school at my local card shop. That's where I learned how to play D&D. I actually learned how to play a lot of different kinds of card games and I was in tournaments. So I understand this experience really well. And this felt 
wrong. This did not feel like my experience because one, it did not feel fun. It felt really boring and really tedious. And even though they spent three episodes explaining how to play this game, I have no idea how to play this game. <laughs> I don't understand anything. Right. There's so much going on. And they spend so much time trying to explain. This is why it's 400 episodes. Yeah. It's 400 <laughs> episodes of them explaining the how to play the game. never stops. No, not ever. Uh, well, I mean, the meta of the game has changed over the years, so. What? <laughs> okay. I can't. Uh, yeah, I mean, so Saki was, was interesting because it basically required a complete and total understanding of how Mahjong works yes. to appreciate the show. Because otherwise you were missing so much of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And they tried to introduce it to a Western <laughs> audience by putting like really brief subs that said, <laughs> hey, when they say this word, it means this. Yeah. But it was gone instantly. While you're also trying to read the dialogue. Right. So we weren't able to appreciate that show because it didn't make any sense. Right. This show does the opposite in assuming that you are a baby mm -hmm. and that you need to be told exactly what is happening at any given moment. Yes. Uh, so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fun's a strong word. <laughs> yeah, this, this show doesn't allow me to get invested in anything because what it does from the beginning is tell me that the game is the most important thing. Not mm -hmm. the characters, not any sort of plot that's going on, because at least with Saki, you knew what the goal was. The goal is that they wanted to go to nationals. I have no idea what these characters want to do with their lives, <laughs> other than, I guess, play this game. Except that uh, the one kid doesn't want to play the game, but he does anyway. Maybe. We've yeah. seen him play two games. <laughs> Yeah, I think what I kind of overall took away from this show is that uh, turning a card game property into a show about playing the card game doesn't work. No. <laughs> so we've seen one show before that was about card games, mm -hmm. and that was ZX Ignition. And that show was really different, too, because while it's kind of loosely based on the card game, the show was about the lore. Yeah. It was about the monsters and the characters and like the heroes on the cards and the universe that they had kind of woven the card game into. Yeah, so you don't actually see the cards when you're watching the show. You, you see the monsters come alive, you see them fight, and if you didn't know that it was a card game, you would walk away without ever realizing that it was based on a card game. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of give a comparison that might be close to home for some people. Okay. Imagine it is 1984, and it is Saturday morning, and you are a child, and everything is great. And you turn the TV on, and then you see the Transformers logo. And then you hear Stan Bush go, you got the touch, <laughs> you got the power. <laughs> and then, you see it. The scene opens on two kids sitting in their living room playing with Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> then they spend five real-time minutes transforming the Transformers. Oh, man. What a different world we'd be living in. That wouldn't be a show. <laughs> that wouldn't be a show. Nobody would watch that. But that's essentially what this show is doing in favor of the card game. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, it's definitely... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely merchandising at its worst. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like how you'd mentioned um, how there's like the slightest kind of hint of this character development of this kid who is closed off and... Uh, finding friends who share this passion with him is the thing that makes him, like, socially blossom. But that's not at all what the show does. It's really like he was a social outcast, he went to the card shop, and suddenly he's awesome. Yeah. And that's, that's his character growth. 
And we really only know that because of his sister, right. who gets introduced to tell us how much of an outcast he is and how different he is, <laughs> because we don't actually see him act any differently. It's just his sister monologuing out loud and saying, something is wrong with my brother because he looks happy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know how you could be happy playing this game. <laughs> hey, apparently people do. <laughs> we'll find that we out. We don't know if it's a good card game. People that's, play it, though. That's true. We're going to have to see. Yep. Oh, you are going. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, she is going. Uh, <laughs> I'll pull up a YouTube tournament tonight and we can watch it. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I, that's still not going to teach me how to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else in final thoughts? No. Nope. In that case, Kayla, I would like to ask you the question that we ask every week. Would you watch more of this show? Hard pass. <laughs> this, this show lacks any real characters, or story, and really, ultimately, what it's lacking is charm. Um, I think a lot of shows, there are times when you can look past, you know, some either some lacking in the characters or some lacking in the story because it has charm as something that to latch onto. And this show has none of that. Um, and so, I, d I don't care to spend any more time on this than I already have. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, it's a no for me as well. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, for me, kind of the main reason is it's painfully obvious that the only purpose of this show is in favor of selling the card game. And they haven't really done a great job of selling it to me, of saying, hey, the, the lore is interesting, the card game mechanics are interesting, because everything is played out so perfectly every time they play the game. Yeah. Uh, any tension that's in the card game is fake, mm -hmm. and any talent that they have is fake because it's all about your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have news. It's, it was actually extremely effective in selling the card game. What? <laughs> uh, when this anime came out, sales skyrocketed. Oh, no. And... <laughs> It continued to grow until today <laughs> while it is still happening. I'm, I have to figure out why. <laughs> it's going to be a lifelong mystery. Or we could just ignore it. That's forever. true. <laughs> All right. Please let this be over. I think so. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you want to learn more about our show, you can visit our website at anamonday.moe. That's anamonday.moe. You can send us questions and comments to, podca uh, blah, blah, blah. to podcast at anamonday.moe. And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Our username is anamondaycast. And you can find links for that on our website. And uh, obviously, if you're here, we have uh, business cards, and they're awesome. Yeah, so we have cards. <laughs> pick up a big stack, because we'll never get rid of them otherwise. <laughs> uh, thanks also to Crunchyroll for all of the anime that you provide. I'm aware that I'm wearing a Funimation badge right now, so... Mm -hmm. We all are. Take that for what you will. <laughs> uh, for all of the anime that you provide, and for the random button, which produces these wonderful and wonderfully terrible results... If you want to follow along with us each week, we'll have a link to the current title on our website and social media so you can watch what we're watching. Finally, thanks to C2A for providing the intro and outro music for our show. Uh, you can find those on Senpai EP and Senpai EP2, The Noticing, which are available on his band camp. All right, Colin, are you ready to roll? If the internet will behave. <laughs> Oh, we have a thing, <laughs> but yes. We have a thing, but I don't know if I can do both. You're going to hurt your legs before you get it up. <laughs> and our first oh. live roll ever is Street Fighter II, <laughs> the animated series. <laughs> Okay, the first episode is called The Adventure Begins. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is amazing. 
this might be our best role yet. I know! <laughs> uh, I believe it is because of the power of the live audience. Okay, we're going to have to bring more guests on. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> all right. We will see you all next week. Yeah, I think that does it for us. Uh, thank you all, live audience, for joining <laughs> us. And thank you, future listener. Woo! We appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.